Hi, and welcome to the seventh video in our PowerShell 7.2 for Intermediate tutorial series. In the last video, we saw how to manipulate and import and export some CSV files. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at JSON files and JSON formatting in general. Uh, JSON is very useful to use in PowerShell, especially once you start getting into using APIs, either calling APIs um, through the get uh, method or even for the put or post methods, oftentimes you'll have to pass in a body which will have to be formatted in a JSON format. So we will see all of that uh, today and let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. Uh, so what I actually have, let me just delete this file because we're going to be creating this file. So what I actually have here is I have a JSON file already created. Um, it's actually a it's got a parent, so it's got some depth to it. So the first level is employees, and then that contains an array of our employees. Um, so that is our generic uh, JSON file that we will be working with today. Um, and then I also have a CSV file that we're going to show you how to convert this CSV file into a JSON file. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to want to do, uh, like always when we work with files, is we're going to want to specify the file path to our employees.json file. So let's go ahead and let's create our variable here called json file path. And we are going to make that equal to our file path. So let me just copy that over here. And then what we're going to do is let's take a look and see what it looks like. So let's do a get content on the path of the JSON file path. So once we actually go ahead and look at this, doesn't seem too, too useful. We just get exactly what our uh, file was. So we have the open curly brackets, our employees, and then the start of the array, and then we have all of our objects in there. Now what we would do in PowerShell is actually then just pipe this get content to the convert from dash json and if we run this here we are going to see that we actually get our employees and then we have all of our employee objects so let me just store store that here so let's create another variable called json data and we're going to make that equal to the get content of our json file path and then we pipe that to convert from json and then what we could do here is do a json data dot employees and if we run all of these lines here there is our files so we actually have all of our employees now we would be able to loop through all of these objects here so what we could actually do is once again just create a new variable called employee data And then in our employee data now are going to be all of our employees, which we would then be able to loop through and either use them in our Active Directory script um, if we want to automate Active Directory. Or if you wanted to search as well, what we could do is do employee data and we could pipe that where, um, let's see, where, where dash object, and then we can say, title is equal to uh, programmer so let's pull back all of our programmers here and there is our programmer in our employee data so if we actually look at that we will see that we have a junior engineer a senior engineer and a ceo and one programmer so that worked perfectly fine uh, we can even manipulate um, the dates as well. We could uh, look up the employee ID. So it's very, very easy to use JSON, very similarly to a CSV file, um, if you have all of your uh, data in there. So that is really the basics on how to work with JSON files. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we can convert our employees CSV to a JSON formatted um, document here. So what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to go ahead and create another variable here called CSV file path. And we're just going to make that equal to our CSV path here. 
And then what we're going to want to do is create a CSV data variable, and we could do an import dash CSV. And then our path is going to be CSV file path. And if we run that here, we can then look at the CSV data. We can see that we have everything there. We have our ID, we have our name, title, country in this one. And all we need to do here is do a CSV data. And we can actually pipe that then to convert to JSON. And if we look at this here, we will actually see that we have a nicely formatted JSON just without that depth that does say employees, um, but we, you don't need that. And it's actually probably easier if you don't have that, if you're just trying to work with employee data, if you already know that everything in that file is just employees, uh, it is 100% okay. And then what you could do is you can then pipe that to an out dash file. And then you would just at that point, give it a file path here. So let me do a C scripts, intermediate tutorials, JSON files, and then export to json.json. And if we go ahead and we run that here, we will see our JSON file is now here, all created with um, that CSV employee data. So if you were uh, trying to migrate all your data from CSV files to JSON files, that's how you would do that. Now comes the probably the most useful part of working with JSON files, and this is probably how you're going to be uh, manipulating JSON most of the time through PowerShell. You might have JSON files um, for like configuration files. Uh, configuration files for me often are XML files or JSON files. Um, but you're always going to be working with JSON if you're working with APIs. Uh, now we've already seen a video where we've compared invoke web request compared to invoke rest method. We're going to be using invoke web request in this one to really kind of manipulate that JSON. So we're going to be using a free API today. So we're going to create a variable called URI, and this is going to be our API um, URL. So it's actually just HTTPS colon backslash backslash uh, rest countries dot com and then slash v2 slash all. And then what we're going to do is we are then going to create a variable called web request, which is going to be equal to invoke dash web request. We're going to specify our URI here, and we're also going to specify our method, which is going to be get. Now, if we actually just run these two lines here and we look at our web request, we can see that we do get a status code of 200, which is perfect. A status description of OK. It means it worked fine. And then we have our content. Now, our content is where our JSON is going to be from our API call. So if we actually look at web request dot content here, we're going to see there's a lot of stuff. What this API does, it actually gets us all the country's information. So it'll give us their top level domain name. It'll give us their country name. It'll give us their capital, uh, the different translations for the countries. But as you can see, it looks very, very ugly when we just look at content. Now this is where you're going to want to use that pipe and then use a convert from dash JSON. And if we look at this here, as you can already tell, it's already getting cleaned up. We have all of these objects coming back. But what we can actually do here is just do a dollar sign uh, country data equals the web request content convert from JSON. And then what we could actually do is do a country data and we can actually pipe that to where dash object name is equal. And we can see where it's equal to Canada here. And here we have all of our Canada information from this API. So we have our Canada, we have our top level domain.ca. There's the different types of country codes via two character, three character, the calling code, 
the capital, we have the subregion and the region, so the continent that it is on. Uh, we have the latitude and longitude. We have the population of 38 million. Um, you are a Canadian. Uh, we also have the different types of currencies here as well, and the different types of languages that are spoken in the country, the translation. And there's even a link to the flag, and that would be a just an image of the flag of Canada. Uh, but we can also do if, where name where United States. And if we look at this info here, it is not there. I believe it might be USA, maybe. Um, so here's another great tip. So where, when you cannot find a country, what I would typically do is a dash like and then United Star. And if we run that here, we have United. Oh, so the name is United States of America. Uh, so if we did United States of America here and we ran this we would then see all the information for United States. We would see the top level domain is .us, um, and then we could see the population. But as you can see, there are a lot of great information that you can actually use by converting it from JSON. You're, you're just turning this very useless data that you can't really parse in PowerShell. You are then creating a bunch of PowerShell objects from that. And then you can use the PowerShell where object sorts, um, select object to get that information that you really want. Now, this is simply getting information um, from an API where we're getting back JSON. There are times where you're going to have to specify a body um, for a post or a put. Um, sometimes even a get will have a body depending on the type of API. Uh, we're going to be working a lot with APIs. We're going to be creating a lot of bodies when we're working with Elastic in a few weeks. Um, so I'm just going over some of the basics here. This way you guys can get familiar with it. So typically what we would do if we have a put or a post and we need to pass in a body, what there are two ways that we could do it. And I'm going to go over the two ways. The first way is simply creating our JSON text directly in PowerShell. The other way is creating a PowerShell custom object and then converting that to JSON. Uh, both ways are very, very useful. Um, it really just depends on what you're more comfortable with doing. So let's actually go ahead and let's just see how we would write JSON directly in PowerShell here. So let's do a JSON body variable. And we're going to make that equal to an at symbol and then double quote. So we're going to be creating a literal string. This is very important when you're creating uh, JSON objects. It does make it a lot easier to kind of see. I find it easier to create JSON objects when I could see the formatting with the curly brackets. Uh, so we're going to start our JSON object with just some curly brackets here. And we're just going to create a very simple employee object. So we're going to do employee ID and colon. And we're going to put our employee ID as 1005. And we're going to do a comma here. And we're just going to put a name. And we are going to put a colon. And then we're going to make that name equal to jacked programmer. And that's all we're going to do. That's going to be our JSON body. Uh, this is what we're passing into our API, let's say. So now if we look at JSON body afterwards, we will see it looks just like that, which is perfectly fine. Now, if what we did is we did a convert from JSON just to see what it would look like as a PowerShell object. There it is. We have our employee ID. We have our name. So. This could be a very easy way to create PowerShell objects is to create a JSON and then just convert from JSON and you'll have your PowerShell object. Um, if you're wanting to manipulate objects in PowerShell, the other option is to create a PowerShell object and then convert that to JSON if you wanted to use that in an API call. Uh, now let's go ahead, let's create our test object here. 
And we're going to make that equal to new object. And we are going to do a type name, PS custom object. And let's go ahead and let's do a add member here on the input object of test object. The member type is going to be a note property. The name of our property is going to be employee ID. And the value here is going to be 1006, let's say. And we're just going to add another line here. We're going to call it uh, name and let's put that here to test jacked. Whoops. Test jacked. All right. So once we have our object here, we're just going to look at it once more after we create it. Just so you guys can see what our object looks like. Here it is. We have employee ID, we have name. All we would need to do now is then convert from oh, convert to JSON. And if we run that here, then we would have our JSON. And then all you would need to do is make that equal to a body. And then you would be able to then pass in this body through our invoke rest method or invoke web request. Um, oftentimes, if you're using a put or post, you will see um, that you can specify a body. And that body is usually needs to be formatted in JSON. Of course, the API documentation will confirm that. Uh, but I haven't really seen anything that's not JSON for APIs. Um, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, but most of the time you will be fully manipulating it with JSON. And we're going to be seeing a lot of this in our next videos uh, with Elastic. So we only have one more file type to look at and manipulate with PowerShell. And that is going to be the XML file type. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys have any comments or questions with JSON files, please let me know down below in the comments. I will be glad to answer your questions or even make another video that clarifies something um, or goes more in depth in a topic that you guys want as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.